Hey there YouTube, it's Brain Freeze Laser, bringing you another Yu-Gi-Oh! 101. This episode is going to be about deck size and body language. Now, the important thing to consider about deck size is what you're trying to accomplish with your deck. Most pro players, or at least competitive players, will tell you that they want their deck to be around 40 to 42 cards. And you may wonder why this number is important. 40 is the minimum amount of cards you have to have in your main deck. Now, why it's important to have 40 cards is so you can consistently get off your deck's combos or get to the cards you need, your finishers, whatever, you know, your end game is for your deck. Now, what, I say 42 because that's an acceptable amount over 40, maybe even 43, 44 is pushing it. 42 is an acceptable amount of cards going over the deck minimum limit without going too far over it to still consistently get combos off. Decks that might be able to do this consistently are decks that have searchers or recruiters, something like glad beasts or black wings used to be able to do that. Heroes could probably go to 42. A lot of you know rescue rabbit maybe, but also, you know, contrary to that, pro players might say that they like it better at 40 because they consistently get their three ofs, you know, they consistently get their their one ofs in the decks. And it makes it just easier in that way. So if you're if you're running something like a stall deck, maybe or something like that, you know, I don't know really what's in final countdown deck, but I'm assuming it, it would be okay at more than 40, probably 44, 45, whatever, because you would you would still be able to hit all the cards that you know you're basically just stalling. But you want to hit final countdown earlier on so you can get it off right away, and then all you really need to worry about after that is just stalling. So 40 is important so that you can consistently hit your combos, consistently hit your end, you know, your game enders, that kind of thing. That's why that number constantly pops up in Yu-Gi-Oh searches for deck sizes and hopefully that helps you understand that. Now, body language. What I mean by body language is say you're playing with a friend or you're at, you know, a local or you're even at a, you know, a bigger event a lot of people have body language that they do when they have specific cards. Now, the bigger players have kind of trained themselves to try not to give you any information at all, you know, via body language or moves they might have made, but sometimes you can just tell. For example, one play that a lot of people learn earlier on nowadays is the Gores play. When somebody doesn't set a back row, it either means one of two things. They don't have anything or they're bluffing and they have a gores. So that's a good that's a good tell that somebody has a gores. That if they don't set any back row, you know, it's either and they, also if they have one card in their hand. If they have one card in their hand, they set no back row and they're not really like, you know, oh man, I'm about to lose. Or maybe if they are even doing that, be very cautious. Don't attack unless you can, you know, hit that hand with some kind of hand disruption or, you know, it doesn't matter if they bring a gores out because you have the removal, whatever. Something just seal the deal before you before you make you know a fatal mistake and attack into a gorge. A body language that newer players have a lot more often than not is they get anxious to, to activate their traps. They get anxious to hit you with a mirror force or a, a Sakuretsu armor or a bottomless trap hole, whatever. So when you go to attack, they're kind of like jumping for their card. They you know they they give you a tell that they have something that they can activate in response to what you're going to do. So what you can do is learn to watch people's hands, learn to watch people's eyes when playing the game. You learn what combos people have in their decks, what, what combos are in certain decks, what people do when they're about to do stuff. So just pay attention to stuff like that. You know, especially when you're playing against newer players, they make a lot of mistakes. So don't make a mistake in not noticing their mistakes. A funny story that happened actually a long time ago when, you know, Teledad was really, really popular. I was playing against one of my friends at his house and I basically telegraphed his exact hand per card. You know, I told him, I was like, oh, you must have a diva with a malicious in hand and a D-draw. And, you know, you probably have a dad, too, and you're just going to set up and synchro with that. And because I guessed his hand so to the T, he basically said, you know, well, you just pull, basically pulled a Daniel Negrano. And Daniel Negrano is a, a really skilled poker player, and he can do that really well. You know, he can look at somebody, he stares them down and just looks at them, looks into their eyes, and says, you have Ace King right now. And there's, you know, nothing on the board will tell him that they have that. It's just their body language and kind of like, well, I guess maybe you can consider the board or whatever, what cards have come, but he can tell what cards people have. And if you, you know, if you hone that skill, you can get pretty good at it. You know, so 
Those are basically some tips from me to you guys, some newer players, or maybe even pro players. You know, just basically watch your opponent's body language. You know, watch what, what plays they make. You can anticipate what's coming by knowing what's in a deck, knowing what the meta field is, and watching your opponent's moves. So in the comment section below, tell me what you think about this video and any situations like this that have happened to you. And as always, hit the subscribe button for new information when my videos come out or subscribe to my Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back later.